are you the best of protectors? So protect me. Oh, I are you the best of protectors? So protect me. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome dear viewers to another episode of our program أسماء الحسنى and as you know by now we are discussing the beautiful names of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and then speaking on them in light of Quran and Hadith and what the ulama have written in their blessed books. And subhanAllah, it goes without saying that this brings great delight, joy, happiness and comfort to the heart of a believer when he speaks about his Lord Allah Azza wa Jal, when he mentions the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward of mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is immense. What does the Quran say? Surah Baqarah verse 152 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim That remember me, I will mention your renown. I will mention you. So, this is a win-win for a believer. The believer provides joy to his heart by mentioning his Lord. And when he mentions his Lord, Allah Azza wa Jal, he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that person amongst the people. Mentions that person amongst the malaika, the angels who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, inshallah, let us begin by mentioning the beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is that name? That name is Al-Azim. Al-Azim Ain Dha Mim. This has come from the word Azamat. And in terms of uh, its literal meaning, well, it means something that is big, that is great. When something is big in terms of its mass as well, when it's big in terms of its body, it's referred to as Azim. That's one way of describing something that is big in terms of body mass etc in terms of its size and the, at times we describe a person's attributes his qualities as being great so there there's nothing to do with size the mass body mass etc the qualities the awsaf of someone we say he has azim khisal he has azim qualities great qualities great great attributes subhanallah so we say this person is a very great person when we say he is a great person, we mean in terms of his characteristics. We mean in terms of his characteristics, his osaf, his attributes and qualities. Sometimes we'll describe a house which is grand in size and we say, look at that great house. So there's different ways of describing things with the word awdeen. Sometimes we refer to a place as being great. A person will say, I went to so-and-so place on holiday. It's a great place, an amazing place. But all of these things are in regards to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know, Allah jalla wa ala is free from having a body, possessing a body, free from being in a place. So he cannot be described in those ways. But when we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we refer to him as azim, what is the meaning that we take then? The ulama state, when we refer to Allah as azim, this means that blessed that which a human, a human intellect cannot comprehend cannot encompass that blessed that which is beyond our comprehension, beyond our thinking capacity, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran says, لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار That the eyes cannot encompass him, but he encompasses the eyes. So, من كل الوجوه, from all angles and all aspects, we cannot comprehend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, there is a limited understanding and Based on that understanding, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We abide by His laws. We obey Him throughout our lives. We try and save ourselves from His disobedience. But ma'rifah, recognition, uh, gnosis, these are things that, subhanAllah, we can't fully understand. Uh, and yes, there are elite people from creation like the Anbiya, والسلام, the Awliya, they have a greater understanding about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used this word in the Quran in multiple places. For example, he describes the arsh as being azim, as being great. And we know the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the biggest creation, biggest makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this arsh is even beyond the heavens, the uh, paradise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the arsh as being great. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over arsh azim. 
he has control over this great arsh as well so he has knowledge of everything he has control over everything he possesses power qudra over everything subhanallah and then jannat subhanallah jannat is azim as well this is great as well what does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about those who uh, adopt righteous a'mal and they follow the ways of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example in surah tawbah verse 100 he describes the sahaba والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين تبعوهم بإحسان that the ones who took precedence the foreigners من المهاجرين والأنصار from the مهاجرون and أنصار companions and those who followed them with إحسان those who followed them with goodness رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن Allah is pleased with them they are pleased with their Lord وعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا and he has prepared for them جنات gardens Beneath which rivers flow. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا abada, And they will abide in there forever. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ That is the great success. عَظِيمُ The word عَظِيمُ has been used. That is the great success. Meaning entry into Jannah, being admitted to paradise, and then enjoying the blessings, the everlasting, eternal blessings of paradise. This is the real success. Subhanallah. And it's not an ordinary success. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Great success. In another place in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions His grace, His fadl. He says, Wallahu dhul fadl al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is great in terms of His grace, His fadl. And in other parts of the Quran, Allah jalla wa has described sins as being great. There it's referring to the severity of those sins. In uh, Surah Al Imran, He talks about His punishment being great. Wallahum adabun awim. Sins have been described as great. If man awima Surah Al Nisa, then Allah jalla wa talks about a slander being great Bohtan and Azima. so like this Azim, the word Azim has been used many times in the Quran sometimes in terms of describing the excellence of something mentioning the Osaf of something sometimes uh, mentioning the level of a sin but obviously it goes without saying that when the word Azim is used for Allah it's always in a positive sense it's never in a negative sense it's always in a positive sense so he is Azim in terms of his rank, his grandeur, his subhanallah attributes. And he's so great that we cannot comprehend him min kullil wudu from all aspects. And in the Quran, there is the verse of the throne, Ayatul Kursi. Most, one of the most famous verses of the Quran is found in Surah Baqarah. Allah Jalla wa'ala says, Wala ya'uduhu hifduhuma wa huwa al-aliyyul azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the heavens and the earth belong to him. He is responsible for their protection as well. And when he is protecting the heavens and the earth, he does not tire. وَلَا يَعُودُهُ حِفْضُهُمَا Without comparison in the world, if somebody is a security guard and he's responsible for protecting a building, he'll have a certain uh, limit on his shift. Then he'll go home, he'll take rest, he'll come back. There'll be a rotation. People will be protecting that building at different times. This is the way of the world. We are humans, we are weak. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without comparison, him protecting the world, it's free from tiredness, free from fatigue, free from needing to rest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful. Wala ya'uduhu hifduhu ma protecting the heavens and the earth does not tire him. Wa huwa al azim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is grand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is elevated and he is azim. Wa huwa al azim. In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ That mention the tasbih, the glorification of your great Lord. فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ Meaning, when you think about the greatness of Allah, when you think about the blessings that He has bestowed upon you, when you look towards His mercy, subhanAllah, when you're pondering and you're contemplating, and after, you, after you've done so, what's the outcome? What is the conclusion that you reach? The conclusion is that you should follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should follow His commandments. You should stay away from His disobedience. You should please Him at every moment. You should worship Him sincerely, wholeheartedly. You should mention His glorification, His praise. You should extol Him, subhanAllah. So, what is the requirement of a believer when hearing this name, Azim? In each episode, we do try and mention the requirement upon a believer when hearing these beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he hears the name Azim and then he recalls the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him how can he become great how can he gain a portion of this how can he reflect that greatness by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by accepting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
by submitting to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how a person becomes great. Whatever Allah has given you in terms of blessings, using them in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not using them to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning the greatness of the eye and the blessing of the eye is to use it in obeying Allah. Similarly, the ear and other body parts as well. So this is the requirement of the name Azim that we too should try and become great believers. How? By obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, may Allah give us tawfiq. This was the first name Azim. The second name, inshallah briefly, Al-Ghafoor. And Al-Ghafoor means the all-forgiving, the one who forgives, the one who pardons, the one who accepts the repentance of a believer. When we discuss the word Al-Ghafar, the name Al-Ghafar rather, we spoke about this extensively. But here, briefly, inshallah ta'ala, that Ghafar is the one who forgives all sins in terms of quantity, all sins. And Ghafoor means the one who forgives all types of sins. Whatever nature those sins consist of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this name in the Quran in various places. I'll just mention a few verses. First of all, Surah Zumar, verse 53. Oh beloved, say, O my slaves, those who have oppressed themselves, La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah jalla wa ala. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'ah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. If a person brings as much sins that could fill the heavens and the earth, that are equivalent to the water in all the oceans of the world, even then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive a person. It doesn't matter if he has a million sins or a trillion sins. Allah jalla wa ala will forgive every single sin if a person repents in his court. And then there's different types of sins as well. We all know that there are minor sins, there are major sins, some sins relate to huqoqullah, some sins relate to huqoqul ibad. And Allah Jalla wa'ala says, إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ That Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoor, the one who forgives different types of sins, all types of different sins. And he is ar-rahim, he is the most merciful. Now here, the ulama say that ghafoor refers to sins in terms of their nature and the different sins. So for example, na'udhu billah, someone murdered another person, al-a'iyadhu billah, someone uh, committed robbery, theft, uh, adultery, fornication, these are major sins. And in the Quran and Hadith we are told to refrain from these sins, to avoid them at all costs. These big sins, major sins, different natures, even kufr and shirk, kufr and shirk are the biggest sins, the greatest sins in the court of Allah, what? Committing kufr, disbelief, shirk, polytheism, associating partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But regardless of how massive they are, if a person falls into error, commits them, but then repents wholeheartedly, seeks forgiveness from Allah jalla wa ala, Allah will forgive him. Regardless of the nature of those sins, how massive they are. And they are massive sins. Kufr and shirk are the greatest sins. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoor. When a person realizes the error of his ways, when a person turns back to the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even these major, massive, great sins, they're all forgiven as well. Why? Because Allah is ghafoor. And Allah is rahim. Allah is all merciful. In another verse of the Quran, Allah jalla wa ala says, وَاسْتَغْفِرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ rahim," And seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving, all merciful. This is in Surah Baqarah, verse 199. In Surah Ali Imran, verse 129, Allah jalla wa ala says, وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. He may forgive whomsoever he wants and he may punish whomsoever he wants. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah is all forgiving, all merciful. Meaning the whole world is in the possession of Allah. He is the owner, he is the malik. Everything is his dominion, his kingdom. He is the haqiqi owner and ruler. And he may forgive whomsoever he wants in creation. He may punish whomsoever he wants. Why? Because he owns everything. Now in the world, without comparison, if something is in your possession, you own something, you can utilize it the way you like. Nobody can come and impose themselves and say, no, don't use it like this, use it like this. It's yours. It's in your ownership. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns everything. How he deals with one person and how he deals with another person, this is up to him. This is his will. لا يسأل عما يفعل. He will not be questioned about what he does. The Quran tells us. 
for whom you sa'alu. But the people, we will be asked. We will be held accountable. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will not be asked about what he does. Who will ask him? Who is powerful enough to ask him? No one. No one can compare to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave us life. He gave us existence. He made the world. We are taking blessings from this world. We are living every day. We are drowned in his blessings and bounties. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do what he likes with his creation. So he may forgive whomsoever he wants. يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ But look at the words thereafter. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Yes, Allah can forgive whomsoever he wants. Yes, Allah can punish whomsoever he wants. But he, Azza wa Jal, is ghafoor and he is rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving, all merciful. Again, this is comfort for the believers. That no matter how much you sin, and yes, you should avoid sin. But we're humans. If you fall into sin, don't despair in the mercy of Allah. Turn back to Allah. Allah loves those who repent. In Allah, you have the tawabin. We're told in the Quran. Allah loves those who repent. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek sincere repentance. Allah loves to forgive. Wallahu ghafoor rahim Now, what is the requirement of this name, ghafoor? Just to conclude here. Firstly, the ulama state that when we're in a situation, when we've been wronged, somebody has violated our right, he's angered us, we should forgive. For the sake of Allah, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And keep in mind the seerah of the Prophet salam, how he forgave people throughout his life. Follow his way, his sunnah. So, ghafoor, we should also forgive people. Allah is all forgiving. and We should try and forgive people as well. The second requirement, the qaza, is that we should seek forgiveness and we should repent in the court of Allah abundantly. We should do istighfar. And we hear in the verse, وَاسْتَغْفِرُ in Allah غَفُورُ rahim. We should seek forgiveness from Allah Jalla wa'ala. And when we seek forgiveness from Him abundantly, we will be the recipients of His forgiveness. Allah is ghafoor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us and He will shower us with His khas rahmah insha'Allah. This is the umid, the hope that we should have in our hearts as well. And we conclude with a beautiful dua that, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the Muslim ummah. Ya Allah forgive all of us. Forgive all of the believers. And, and Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us death with afiyah, with iman, inshallah, and allow us to live a life of obedience to Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah jalla wa'ala grant us the blessings of His names, Awim and Ghafoor, as we heard in this episode. Ameen, Bijahin Nabi al Ameen, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, you're the best of protectors, so protect me. Oh Allah, you're the best of protectors, so protect me.